Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is part two of episode two of the uh, custom showcase, uh, in which we are um, looking at my custom Studio Series thirty eight Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. Excuse me if you hear my dog barking. So uh, in the previous video, in part one, we uh, I showed you guys the uh, custom that I made using the Hasbro uh, Studio Series 38 and in this one I'm going to show you this custom that I made um, I bought these two uh, together these are KOs of the three, uh, Studio Series um, with the intent of doing these versions um, one is the uh what well, I, I, I was calling the toy version and the uh, animation version over here um so this is of uh, the toy version uh, let me just um quickly pull out so this is the um let me move this out of the way here so this is the obviously uh, the G1 Optimus Prime. Um, this is the re the last most recent reissue, the Walmart reissue. And um, so, as you can see, the the original G1 toy had all this uh, chrome on it. The um, so that's what I try to. Uh, emulate here on in this version the um, I only uh, had to um, repaint the red on the figure because the red was a, a, a lot darker not too dark you know but it's a shade darker uh, I didn't paint the blue because the blue pretty much matched with what the toy is um, except for obviously the, the inside parts of the leg those were gray so I had to try color match I didn't do a good as job you know but um, I did what I could also the hands you know uh, as mentioned in the previous video the hands on the studio series are black so I painted those also blue but yeah so the intent was to try and emulate the color scheme for uh, the G1 toy so as you can see it has the you know the um, the silver on the on the face plate, the yellow eyes, and the blue around the um, the eyes, and that's uh, you know what I uh, ended up doing on this one. Um, it's to to be able to paint the eyes. You can split the head, uh, you know, open, and the back piece has the eyes going out so when you when you uh, pull this open I use the um, an exacto knife uh, and it has like a uh, there's a chisel type uh, end on it so I would just you know shove it in there wiggle it until like I was able to pry it open uh, and I was able to get uh, you know pop out the, the head off and um, I was able to paint the eyes that way because painting the eyes you know with the as is you know it's gonna be a little harder so speaking of hard um, this figure um, it's um, it's a pretty cool um, mold uh, that's why I chose this instead of you know something like um, the Earthrise or the um, the Siege um, Optimus Prime. Um, I just love this um, mold. So, as I explained, I think I said that in the previous video. And um, so, also what I ended up using here to paint. So this is uh, the red I used is uh, automotive paint. This is a uh, duplicolor. The um, the color that I used was a um i think i have a paint here 
yeah, yeah, emptied out in a jar. So this is the, um, it's the cardinal red. This is the, the red, the, the paint that I used. Um, this is what was left. Obviously I used uh, the spray can to, to spray paint the, the figure. And then I painted the, uh, the stripes silver. Um, I think I used a Sharpie, a silver Sharpie, yeah. And then I paint these uh, with uh, paint. I, I used a Sharpie to paint the silver. Uh, but um, the, uh, the chrome, the chrome is probably the hardest part to paint on this figure. Um, the original chrome paint that I had used uh, was a spray can. It would not uh, get me the sh bright, shiny mirror chrome that I wanted, you know, to emulate like on the, uh, the G1 toy. So I ended up having to buy the, um, the Molotov liquid chrome pen. Um, but I could only find it with the two millimeter, two millimeter tip. So having to paint uh, the large, uh, such a large area with such a small tip wouldn't allow me to get a smooth uh, finish on the thighs. As you can see, there's some waviness to it. Uh, there's also some rough areas because as you can see um, from handling the figure, um, from handling the figure, uh, as you can see right here, All right? Um, and there's like the waviness. Um, this uh, paint takes a long time to cure. Um, I had to repaint this uh, portion of the figure easily three or four times. Every time I thought the paint was dry and I would gr handle the figure, I would, you know, leave smudges and I would have to uh, sand it off and uh, repaint it. Uh, I did this several times. I'm telling you the uh, the um, the Molotov. This is a great product, but if you're gonna use it to paint large areas, get the there's a four a four millimeter tip. So I would recommend you get that. Uh, you know if you're gonna do a similar custom, you know use the four millimeter tip tip to paint these large areas. Uh, it'll make life easier. You can use the smaller tips to, for the smaller areas here. As you can see, it's, uh, uh, you know, smoother and, uh, you know, almost flat even. The paint uh, was able to, to smooth out. Um, also, um, so, so yeah, the, the paint takes a lot of time to cure. Um, I'm even afraid to touch it right now because I don't know. And I finished this custom way over a month ago. Um, I want to say even two months. Um, I, oh, there goes me bumping the camera. Um, I don't even want to touch it. Uh, I mean, I'm already out of the paint. So I, even if I ruin it, I wouldn't be able to fix it. Uh, I may have still have a little left, but it's probably not going to be enough to cover the, the whole area. So I'd rather just not touch it. Um, if you can find, you know, spray cans, um, chrome, mirror chrome that works for you, great. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, just be careful with the chrome. This is on the back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's just a pretty basic, you know, basic colors, like the figure, you know, nothing too fancy. I didn't pick out any of the details like, uh, like I did on uh, the... Um, the first custom that I showed in the previous episode or part one of this episode right uh, it's just basic flat colors like um, like the uh, G1 toy I just wanted to mimic the look um, I contemplated to maybe you know if I would have painted since this has red underneath the chrome um, I debated if I should have painted some red underneath here uh, but I decided to against that and just left it chrome. And uh, uh, 
also worth mentioning the um, this custom does not transform um, I did a lot of modding to it uh, to fill in uh, empty areas spaces you know uh, reshaping the um, the back part of the figure around this area here uh, I used the parts these parts here on the sides uh, these are from the um, the parts that form the front wheels on the um, truck mode right so um, I, uh, I took that apart uh, cut uh, took out the, the tires and um, um, glued in what were the disc brakes I glued those in into in the inside of portion here on the back side of the of the of the abdomen area and this is glued into place this is glued into place so this I, I can't move this so that's how the figure is it, it kind of gives him the uh, you know the smaller uh, profile to match the you know kind of match the, <laughs> the G1 toy um, compared to the stock figure um, the um, the back portion does uh, come out more right so um, I like the, the slimmer profile that it gives this this toy uh, this version of the toy so yeah um, that's about it on this custom um, just like I said you know recommendations if you're going to uh, paint this figure um, be careful of what type of chrome you want to use if you're going to use the Molotov chrome uh, get the, get the thicker tip to apply to the larger areas uh, and do not touch it and I'm serious do not touch don't even go near the figure just uh, let it rest uh, for like a week a month if you're, try if you're gonna work on this figure uh, while you're uh, you know repainting other areas uh, need the legs till last don't touch them and uh, just to make sure that the paint has fully fully cured and um, you know and enjoy the custom that you make uh, there's gonna so I mentioned earlier in the other episode part one um, about uh, paint chipping uh, you know the uh, I, I don't even remember when this happened but um, obviously it happened when I was trying to I guess I was trying to move the figure and pose it around uh, so that's why I have the um, the leftover paint in the jar uh, so I can touch it up uh, this um, just be warned with the KO plastics it's a uh, the plastic is a little more, um, you know, it's not cheap. I'm not trying to say it's cheap. It's just uh, a little more um, slippery, I guess you can say. It just feels different from the Hasbro version. So if you're going to try and apply paint to it, make sure that you may scuff, you scuff with some uh, sandpaper, scuff it up, and then smooth it out again, and then apply some primer to it. I did apply primer, but I guess I didn't apply enough because um, it obviously peeled off all on this version there's a little chipping a little chipping right right there but it mostly stayed on so um, so yeah but you know it, it moves freely there's not there's not in, there's no impeding the um, the figure uh, so yeah just make sure that when you're applying your coats apply them thinly don't apply them too thick and yeah just watch out for the type of chrome that you're gonna use and that's about it for this custom uh thank you for watching and i'll see you on part three of this episode thanks